The religious right loves the president, because apparently the next best thing to a messiah is a messiah complex. But who are these Christians, and why do they stick with him? While many wait on Trump staffers or ranking Republicans to break with the alt-president, there's a group of loyal Trumpists you'd think would be more positioned to jump ship on his morally bankrupt leadership, the religious right. But believe it or not, Trump got 81% of the white evangelical vote, and as of April, 78% of them still supported the president. And that support is odd, considering Trump only ever mentions the Bible when also trying to sell his own book, The Art of the Deal, which according to him is... My second favorite book of all time. What's my first favorite book? The Bible. Unfortunately, the Bible is in 20% off at Amazon.com right now with a new forward from Kellyanne Conway, also new glossy pictures. Ooh, there's my gam gam. That's a building. <laughs> but the religious right has consistently given Trump a pass. During the 2016 election, one top evangelical leader, James Dobson, swept candidate Trump's mountain of immoral behavior under a mountain-sized rug when he said Trump wasn't a bad Christian, simply a, quote, baby Christian. He's a baby Christian. Mm -hmm. We all need to be praying for him. Baby Christian? That sounds like born-again Christian gone wrong. The good news is he's accepted Jesus as his personal Lord and Savior. The bad news is he still s his pants. And sure, there were many Christian leaders who didn't endorse Trump during his candidacy, but when he won, some quickly got on board, like famous evangelist Franklin Graham, who told The Atlantic, quote, Trump offended gays, he offended women, he offended the military, he offended black people, he offended the Hispanic people, he offended everybody, and he became president of the United States. Only God could do that. But isn't God supposed to be loving? Why would God condone someone who hatefully offends everyone? Unless... Vladimir Putin has God's pee tape, doesn't he? Maybe evangelicals accepted Trump as their political lord and savior so that they could eventually be part of his evangelical advisory board, the group of 25 faith leaders that advise the president, chat with him weekly, and pray. So today we pray for Donald Trump. Yes. yes. We pray for his family, we yes. pray for his, his associates. We also pray, Lord, that he stops making the duck face every single prayer. Oh, God, if you could find a way to his disgusting little mouth and yes. make it a little less disgusting, we would be forever humbled in thy name. Amen. 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 But this faith council does more than just pray. It acts as the administration's defense on pretty much every political decision. After Trump's first travel ban, Graham justified it by saying, the Bible didn't say so. Speaking in support of the president, Franklin Graham says, quote, it's not a biblical command for the country to let everyone in who wants to come. That's not a Bible issue. He's right. It's not a Bible issue. It's a moral issue. But I get it. Since when did the Bible deal with morals? You want a Bible issue? Ask Pastor Robert Jeffries, also on the Faith Council, about North Korea. I believe the Bible, especially Romans 13, does give President Trump moral authority to use whatever force necessary, including assassination or even war, to topple an evil dictator like Kim Jong-un. What? And as crazy as that sounds, Romans 13 does state very clearly that whoever rebels against the authority is rebelling against what God has instituted. Except, of course, if said authority is black. I'm not saying President Obama is the Antichrist, but I believe he is conditioning people to accept governmental overreach. Also on the council is Trump's closest spiritual advisor, Paula White, a twice-divorced Florida-based televangelist who preaches that God rewards faithful Christians with material wealth and encourages her followers to give her as much money as they can, promising it will get God's attention. Oh, and her first church went bankrupt in 2014 after defaulting on $29 million in loans. Essentially, Paula White is the Donald Trump of Christianity. Oh, they're soulless mates. Fun fact, White's third marriage is to a guy who is the keyboard player of Journey and wrote the song Don't Stop Believin'. And if you ever thought that song was at all inspirational, know that in Trump's America, Don't Stop Believin' is an order. Don't stop believing. White also recently said that if you go against the president, you go against God. 
God says that he raises up and places all people in places right. of authority. Right. It is God that raises up a king. It is God that sets one down. Yes. And so when you fight against the plan of God, you're fighting against the hand of God. That itty bitty hand of God, the image in which he made his king. And then there was arguably the administration's most indefensible controversy to date, Trump's excuse of neo-Nazi groups in Charlottesville. While many religious leaders all over the country protested the president's comments, some of the evangelical advisory board members, including Jerry Falwell Jr., defended him. In fact, only one representative stepped down in protest. But meanwhile, Trump's business councils disbanded over the same remarks. That means the CEOs of corporate America have stronger morals than this country's Christian leaders. And that really speaks to the importance of having an HR department. Evangelicals might answer to God, but CEOs answer to Cheryl. And when it comes to Nazis, Cheryl does not f around. The question that still remains though is why? Why do these purported Christians stick around and keep defending a lusting, gluttonous, greedy, sloth-like, wrath-filled, envious, prideful, is that all the seven deadly sins? Anyway, that guy. It's because they want something in return. They want their fundamentalist president to implement their fundamentalist agenda. Now that ultra-conservative Gorsuch is in the Supreme Court and Trump has nominated another 55 conservatives to federal judicial positions, they'll want an overturn of Roe v. Wade, same-sex marriage, and hey, maybe rewrite the tax code to make swindling the working class on TV prayer shows even more lucrative. And all they have to do is keep pretending Trump is their second favorite savior. Thanks for watching everybody. Please remember to subscribe right now and also let us know in the comments what you think a true Christian would do in the face of a Donald Trump presidency and or what your favorite retrograde passage of the Bible is. You know, if you're into atheism and stuff. Anyway, bye.